We are here in Toronto and we are gonna try two of my favorite Korean treats of all time. Hodo guaja and hotdog, which are walnut cake and stuffed Korean pancakes. So this guy from Korea, Mr. Lee, he came here 26 years ago. He wanted to open a place that specialized in his favorite childhood snack, which is these walnut cakes that you would typically find in highway stops or trains. They're not really a common thing that you would find on the street. Not only did he stuff them with red beans, but he did a little Canadian innovation here. He has a version that's stuffed with sweetened mashed potatoes. Yes, that's something you can only find here in Toronto. Honestly, can't wait to try it. This machine thing is like mesmerizing. Hold the guajan machine, like I wanna look at those walnut cakes being made for a solid 10 hours. It's so satisfying to see the little squirt come out and like the filling, even the sounds that it makes, like the clinking of the metal. It's just this amazing sensory experience. To me, it is, it's a picture of my childhood. Taking road trips in Korea when I was nine and not knowing anything about a country that, you know, I'd only heard of, um, but never really visited and never really experienced. And these, to me, were like one of my first memorable foods, actually, that I had in Korea. This is the traditional red bean filled hodo guaja. And, mm, oh man, I wish you could try this. This is so good. I have to say, these are really, really magnificent. They're really well done. Uh, the outside is just that gentle, crispy crunchiness. It's not like hard. It's not like eating an actual walnut. I mean, it's inside it's plush and soft. There is a, you know, a nice warm cake. That's not too sweet. That's essential. And the red bean, which they actually make in house. I mean, this is really good stuff. This, you actually taste the flavor of the beans. It's not just like pure sugar. The red bean ones have a little nugget of walnut in there to remind you that this is shaped like a walnut. So it's not, the whole thing isn't like necessarily imbued with like a ton of walnut flavor, but you do get a little crunch, a little piece of walnut. It just reminds me of like something you would eat in the fall, you know, just, I just imagine like leaves falling and uh, just like brisk weather. And it's something that you, it's almost like a warm blanket. If you've never had red bean before, I would say that beans are something that are generally sweet. So the closest variant would be like chocolate cream or chocolate frosting or chocolate mousse because it, it doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't taste anything like that, but it has that same sort of like, it brings that same sort of comfort if you were to take a knob of like chocolate cream or like chocolate fudge and just take a bite out of it. It's the same sort of idea. This is straight up potato, mashed potatoes. One big difference that I notice with straight up mashed potato versus like say using a sweet potato, you, you can tell that it's artificially sweet. And I like that because it's sort of chestnutty in that sense, right? Because chestnut has a little more of a crumbliness. It has a different kind of sweetness than just say like sweet potato. It is a nice contrast and I can see how it's a little more approachable. If you haven't had red bean before, like this is like maybe more immediately just like, you're just gonna pop one in and go like, yeah. When he first opened, he just had red beans and he innovated, you know, created this innovation where, hey, if I take potato, something that's a little more familiar to a Canadian palate, and sweeten it slightly and put it inside this very wonderful looking vessel, then it'll take off. And at this point now, they're actually selling 50-50, red bean to mashed potatoes. I'm just gonna start hamstringing these. I think tears are coming out. I wanna make you an offer you can't refuse. You come here on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> There's something kind of therapeutic about this. It's like, I think that's why hamsters do it. Cause they're like, I'm hungry, but I can't eat it. I'm just gonna put it away for a while. Now these are really, really cool. These to me, I actually um, think that they are the most unsung Korean dessert. And I love that they give it to you with this cardboard piece. This is like super how you're supposed to eat it in Korea. Because they take this pancake, they're taking this dough and they're, they're griddling it. It's just this kind of like really plush dough, um, but it's had, it has a nice pliancy and chewiness. And inside is just molten brown sugar and spices and nuts. This stuff is super hot. So that's why they give you this to hold on to the pancake. It's sort of like a really dense pancake. It doesn't have quite the cakiness of like a classic pancake. I love that the filling is just so simple. It's just molten brown sugar with a little bit of cinnamon and some nuts. 
I can have one of these every day. It would not be good for my health, but I, I would love to eat this. Mm. This is this is my personal favorite Korean dessert of all time. And when you put the red bean inside, it has this, I can see why it's popular with Japanese customers because it sort of resembles like a taiyaki pancake. This is good. This, they're both great. I mean, these are, like if you're walking by, like I'm gonna always pick up one of these. For a lot of Koreans, it's gonna remind them of home, but even if you've never had this before, like these are undeniably fun and delicious and awesome. Thank you so much for watching, and I am gonna stuff more of these into my mouth like a hamster, and if you wanna see more Kate's out, click right here.